but, 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 we did get an allocation that is much higher than what the other jurisdictions received. So, you know, Alberta is on the path to energy transition. We are talking about the hydrogen economy, we're talking about CCUS, artificial intelligence, aviation, the sky's the limit, small modular reactors. And in order to actualize these objectives, which are very much in alignment with the federal government, we need to make sure that our nominee certificates are increased. So last year, the number of uh, provincial nominee certificates that were allocated to Alberta were 6,500. And we knew when the federal government put their plan out that they had upped the nomination certificates. And just back calculating the numbers, uh, Minister Madhu is, is, is very audacious and he had asked for a double and I supported the double, but I had a feeling we weren't going to get double. But, 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 we did get an allocation that is much higher than what the other jurisdictions received. So that is a good news story. Yes. Let's clap to that. We have almost 9,800 allocations for this upcoming year, uh, more than 10,000 for the year after, and almost 11,000 for 2025. This is unheard of. And I do believe this is a reflection of our conversations that if you want our economies to transition and move in a certain direction, make it easy. Make it easy for us and let us invite those individuals across the globe who can help us get to that point. Now, there's so many other aspects of the immigration portfolio that I want to touch on, um, but I'm going to just uh, focus on the highlights, and there will be some announcements coming forward. One of the policy changes that we have made has included prioritizing those individuals who have family members here in Alberta in the express entry portal. So what that means is that if there's somebody out there in some jurisdiction across the world who says, hey, you know, I want to come to Alberta, by the way, my, my brother lives there, that individual's application will be prioritized. And the reason for that is because we all know when you have social supports, you tend to do so much better. You have somebody who can mentor you, who can show you the way and, and help you settle. Everything is easier, easier, connection to housing, to education. So this was a very popular um, policy change to the immigration program because it means even people living here, all of a sudden, they can see opportunities to invite some of their family members to come and settle here in Alberta. We did put together an anti-racism action plan in July of 22. It's on our website. And since then, we have undertaken significant engagement with communities all across the province. And uh, whoever has attended any of my multicultural engagement sessions, please put up your hands. I want to see who you are. Excellent. I see a number of faces. And thank you again, because your commentary and your feedback is most definitely going to be included in the policies that we put forward as we're coming together to try to put legislation in place. So that is an update on the work that's being done. Uh, Amelia Yassin talked about the multicultural and anti-racism grants that were uh, announced last year and we're just in the process of actually dispersing those. Now look friends, I want you to know that this is groundbreaking historical work. I was in estimates the other day and uh, one of the MLAs was saying, you know, you've cut all these funds to the multiculturalism portfolio and he was quite beside himself and I said, absolutely not, it's actually the opposite. We have funded ethnocultural communities for $4 million in the upcoming budget. And that's in recognition of the fact that this anti-racism work and this settlement and integration work a lot of it happens at the grassroots level. Many community leaders and influencers who are out there are the ones who are going to connect newcomers to support and are going to help sensitize them to some of the cultural norms in our country. So being able to provide funding at the grassroots level is a game changer. And this is something that I learned during COVID. When we were trying to get our vaccination rates up, who did the most work? It was a grassroots organization. So this is groundbreaking historical work, has never been done in the history of Alberta before. 